Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully the sound isn't too echoey because I finally removed the bed that was in this room and now I feel like it's a little echoey. But yeah, on today's video, I wanted to do a swatch video of all the drugstore foundations that I have. I know this will be helpful for you guys that are looking to buy certain foundations that you haven't purchased yet. And all of these foundations, like I said, are drugstore foundations that you guys can find either at Walgreens, Target, Walmart, stores like that let's get started i'm gonna go by brand some of the items i only have one of the brand and then some of the brands i have like four foundations just a little bit about my skin i have combination to oily skin more so in the summer during the winter it's just kind of like solid combo skin i consider myself a olivey undertone like warm olive undertone this is like actual like daylight lighting i don't have any studio lighting so this is pretty much what my skin looks like and keep in mind some of these foundations don't quite match me the way they should when i'm looking for a foundation video i like seeing the swatches even if it doesn't match the person's skin i like getting an idea of what the swatch looks like so hopefully this helps you guys in any way shape or form so this is the catrice hd liquid coverage foundation this one's supposed to be lasting 24 hours mattifying second skin effect i'm not going to talk too much about the foundations because i think i did a review on almost every foundation that i'm talking about i'm gonna make sure to put all of those links to those videos in the description box below if not i'll put them in the eye above let's swatch this one and this one is in the color camel beige and i know somebody had asked me if this one dries on the pink side i don't think so if anything i think it's more neutral but definitely not pink in my opinion next is the number seven protect and perfect i think it's called yes this is an all-in-one foundation, hydrating, age-defying, medium coverage. It has SPF 50. This one, when you first apply it, it does look a little gray in the bottle and even when you first apply it, but it definitely oxidizes to more of a olive -y, warm foundation. So that's it right there. And again, you can actually see it, even right now, you can see it oxidizing a little bit, whereas when you first apply it, it looks almost gray-like. So don't let that scare you if you guys are looking into this foundation. It's a really nice foundation. I actually enjoyed this one very much. Next is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Foundation, I think that's called, or 20 wear, 24 Hour Fresh Wear. This one is in the shade Sun Beige, number 475. This one might be a little too dark for me. Or a little too yellow I think there's one called sand beige that I think would match me a little bit better during the summer I think this matches okay but it is a little bit more yellowy than I like so just keep that in mind if you guys are near my skin tone this one might be a little too yellow L'Oreal infallible pro matte foundation this one is in the shade 108 caramel beige this is probably the same case as the fresh wear where it's a little too yellow for me you can make it work when you blend it out it doesn't look too noticeable but it's a little too yellow for my liking just keep that in mind that's the shade caramel beige this is the revlon photo candid foundation in the shade 430 honey beige I know it looks dark right now, but when you blend it out, I feel like it looks okay. It might be a little too dark. Let me blend it out so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I guess this one might be a little too pink. I'm just like really pale these days, and I think a lot of us are because we're not going out. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it does look a little bit more on the pinkier side. All right, next is one of my favorite foundations that I've ever reviewed here on my channel. This one is the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover in the shade Soft Tan, number 228. I really enjoyed this foundation. I'm just going to shake it up. Um, and the shade also, because it has more of like an olivey undertone. So you could almost see that green undertone. That is like my favorite tone. It's not too yellow, not too neutral. It's like the perfect undertone. And that again is soft tan. All right, next is the Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundation. And I've gotten so many questions about this foundation as to what shade I am. I do have two shades. I have the shade 310 Sun Beige and then 228 Soft Tan. I'm gonna swatch both of these for you guys. And then that way you guys can decide which one will probably work best for you. Ooh, I forgot this one doesn't have a pump and it just came out like crazy. So this one right here is number 228 Soft Tan. I honestly think this is like very, very close to the Dream Urban Cover shade. 
Like I said, it's not too yellow. It's more of like on the olivey undertone kind of shade. And then this right here is the 310. I'm gonna swatch them next to each other. I think one of these I used to use more in the summertime. And then the other one in the winter time, I just can't quite remember which is which. So we'll swatch them together. This is probably during the winter time because this is slightly darker. So this is 310 right here, 310 sun beige, and then 228 soft tan. Next foundation that I have is the Maybelline Fit Me. This is their dewy foundation, which I also did a review on and I ended up liking it surprisingly. Even though I have oily, like an oily T-zone, I ended up liking it a lot. This is in the shade 240 Golden Beige. This one might be a little too yellow. So I might have gotten this one when I had a tan or something because hopefully you guys can tell the difference when somebody says olive or yellow undertone. This is a yellow undertone. You can make it work, but just keep that in mind it's a little bit more yellowy again if you are more of like a warm olive undertone like i am then this one might be a little too yellow but you could always make it work next up is the maybelline superstay full coverage foundation this foundation i reviewed it was one of the first foundations that i ever reviewed on my channel the video blew up and it has a lot of views and i think it's because this foundation was really hard to match. This shade, um, it's number 220 natural beige and it's not a shade that I typically buy, but this foundation oxidized so much that this shade actually works. Make sure to watch that video if you guys haven't watched it so you guys can see how much it oxidizes. But I'm gonna swatch it for you guys right here. there it is i actually think that when i first bought it it looked a little lighter but since it's already an old bottle look at this i need to get a new one i feel like it already oxidized inside the bottle uh to where it doesn't look that bad because in the video you'll see it looks hella light and right now it looks okay next up is cover girl and this is the cover girl outlast active i made a video on this really really nice foundation i actually think it's like a hidden gem because I don't see a lot of people talking about it and I loved it a lot. So I'm gonna swatch it for you guys. This is in the shade number 857 Golden Tan. This shade for some reason actually works for me. Once everything's done and powdered and everything, I think this shade is okay. Their shade within this foundation is kind of wacky, so this one was like the best match. Next with CoverGirl is the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation, and this one right here. This one is in the shade T10. I think this one is a little too yellow for my taste, almost orangey, right there. And again, this is in the shade T10. I think there's an M10 that I think would work better for me. Again, I'll put the other option down below, but yeah, this is T10. I don't even know if they still have these. This one, I don't remember liking the foundation. This one is their Full Spectrum Matte Ambition in the shade Medium Golden. This one's more on the neutral side. It's not too yellow, more just like flat out neutral in my opinion. I have one foundation for e.l.f. but I have two uh, shades. This is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. I have the shade Linen and I have the shade Cashew. The shade Cashew worked a little bit better for me. I think the shade Linen was a little bit too light. I will swatch both of them together for you guys side by side just so you guys can see the difference. So the first one I'm going to swatch is the shade Cashew. which I think is my best match. And then the shade Linen. I think this was just a little too light and a little too light. That's what it was. <laughs> so yeah, Linen, as you can see, is way too light. This is actually a good, like, if it was a concealer, it'd be a nice concealer shade, but Cashew just looks more olivey, more closer to my liking. So yeah, Linen. Cashew. Moving on to Wet n Wild. I have the Photo Focus Foundation in their Dewy line. I wasn't a complete fan of their previous foundation, like their regular one. This one is actually really nice. Considering I have oily skin, it is really nice. This is a shade Golden Beige. I actually enjoy the fact that it has a spatula. 
and I think this is a really good shade for me. I don't have any issues with it. It does dry a little darker, so once it's dry and oxidized and all that stuff, I feel like it matches me really well. If I do get darker in the summer, obviously I don't think this will work, but the shade as it is right now, golden beige, I think works really well. All right, next one is one of my favorite foundations that came out recently. I forgot when it came out, but this is the NYX Born to Glow. I love this foundation and their shade range is amazing. They have a lot of undertones, a lot of uh, shades. So this is the shade Medium Olive, which, yes. Uh, I'm gonna swatch it for you guys. And the foundation is actually a good one. So this is Medium Olive. This is literally the perfect shade for me. I wish all foundations had this shade. Medium Olive. I hope you guys can see that greeny undertone. It just, it's, it's the best. When a foundation line has olive undertones, it's awesome. The only other foundation line that I know that has olivey undertones is the Dior Backstage Foundation. They actually carry olive undertones. I have it right here. I have mine in the shade 4WO, Warm Olive. Last but not least, I have Hard Candy. And this is the Glamouflage Full Coverage 16 Hour Wear Foundation. I have two shades, one in Honey and the other one in Olive. I like to mix these both, but sometimes I do wear them separately. I'm gonna swatch Honey for you guys first. Honey works really nice alone. It's not olivey, but it's not too yellow. I think it's more on the neutral side. That's Honey. The coverage is amazing with this foundation. Olive on its own is kind of light for me. I don't think I've ever used this one on its own. I do mix it together. But if you are a little lighter than I am and like a good olive undertone foundation, that's that. And then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you mix them together. I'll do it right here. And I feel like it matches my skin tone a little bit better. This is the honey. This is the olive. And then this is the, both of them mixed together. I feel like it just matches a little bit more. You might think that this matches a little bit better, but in person, this just looks a lot better. And that is it. I think I swatched all of the drugstore foundations that I have. If there is a foundation that I don't have that you guys think I might like after watching all of these swatches and kind of like getting a feel of what I tend to gravitate more, let me know because I'll also do a review on those. I did order the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. And once it does, I'll do a review for you guys. I'm excited about that one. But yeah, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.